Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be going into Cura and slicing these up for 3D printing. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to open up Cura, and this is a free software. I'll put a link in the description below, uh, but this is very, very popular slicer. Um, you can load in your printer. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of slicing. I actually teamed up with my friend Ed over at the Institute of 3D Printing, who teaches you how to do all the pro slicing. You know, you can do beginner slicer, intermediate slicer slicing lessons or advanced slicing lessons, which I've done a lot of these and they're incredible. So I'll put a link to his uh, his platform below and that will really help you if you're having trouble slicing your prints up. Um, I mainly just focus on design. So that's what we're going to do today is bring in our designs. So we can just open up uh, or we can just import our designs with this little folder here. Click on that and then navigate to your STLs folder, or your 3D folder, and there we go. We've got all of our designs here. I'm just gonna shift click on all of these and say open, and they're gonna all come into the design here, or into the slicer, and so they're pretty large. Uh, so we may have to do these one at a time. So let me actually change to a bigger printer. I'm gonna do my CR10, and so I've just loaded in all the different printers that I have. Let it load and kind of rethink here. So. Now I've kind of laid out all these designs on the bed here and we can change the settings. So usually I'll just do, uh, you know, like 0.2 is the easiest. So we'll just put it on basic settings. And for the quality, you can do like 0.2. That's just kind of standard, uh, not 22, sorry, 0.2. And then for infill, that's, you know, how dense the inside of your, um, your object is gonna be. We definitely don't want 100%. Uh, average is like 20 or 30. So I'm just gonna do 20. And you can change the, the different pattern. You know, if you wanna do something cool like gyroid, then uh, you can do that. And then the, you know, if you want supports. And the way we built this, we shouldn't need supports for our designs. Uh, but if you want to, you can. You can also do um, build plate ad ad adhesion if you want like a raft underneath your designs. Um, I like to just try and do it without any supports or any rafts. So if you're feeling dangerous, you know, go ahead and come on with me. And so we've got 0.2 millimeter high, uh, quality, 20% infill, no supports and no raft. So we'll just close that out and let's slice it on up. And it may take a little while because we have a lot of designs here and a lot of uh, poly counts. So let's just give it some time and let it do its slicing. And there we go. So now we can hit preview. It says it's gonna take about 20 hours. So that's pretty crazy. I would, I would recommend maybe just printing one of these, maybe your favorite, and then taking a picture of it and sending it on the Discord. Um, so now we're just inspecting the prints here to see if everything turned out okay. Um, all of them look pretty awesome. The only one that I'm seeing issues with is the, the Solidify one right here. Um, it's looking like it's got some holes in it. And what that's telling me is it's probably not thick enough. So I know that our thickness layer was like 1.2. So let's try and thicken that up and bring that design back in. So uh, I also know we I scaled these down um, to about 75%. So let me scale this one back up. Let's do it back to 100. This is the actual size that it was in Blender. So now it should be a true, you know, one millimeter thickness um, to slice. And the good thing is if, say, if it can't slice or if it's still too thin, all we have to do is just go back into Blender and thicken it up. So it's still looking a little too thin. You can see right in there, we're having some issues. That's totally fine. You know, everything else looks great. So if you are having any issues, all you'd have to do is go into your design that's having some issues um, and you can make the changes. So for this one, we're gonna do it on Solidify. Go in here and instead of one, let's do like 1.5. And then we can just hit export. And the cool thing is just overwrites our other one. And we can just come into our slicer again, go back to the prepare layout, delete the that one and bring in the updated, which is the solidify here. And there we go. So now we can try and slice it and see if thickening it up uh, has made a difference on that area right there. And then we can do preview. And there we go. So that's looking much, much better. We're getting a nice solid uh, little part here. So we just had to make it a little bit thicker. And that's the beauty of you know keeping everything modular and uh, open with our modifiers. 
Um, so I may even try and go back and kind of increase the size of these. Uh, again, I wouldn't want you to you know, print all of these at once. I would recommend maybe just doing one at a time. Uh, that way you can really kind of learn from each experience. But I just want to show you that all of these uh, can be 3D printed all at once, uh, all from the same design file. Uh, one thing to note too is, uh, you know, your very first layers. I always check the first layers when I'm printing. So go to the very bottom and notice, um, you know, they, some of them, like this one has almost no uh, layers here, but you want like a nice flat bottom. That's going to increase your success rate of your prints exponentially. So notice this one here, we're not really getting anything until maybe the very bottom. So we may have to go back to our design here. This one's just been a problem child um, and fix this one right here. So let's go back to Blender and let's check out our box here. So and there is our issue. It's kind of doing some kind of weird clipping right here. So let's just kind of look under here, do G and Z. And there we go. If we barely hold shift, you can see it's going to chop off the bottom there for us. Just look on the bottom. There we go. So that should be a lot better. Again, just click on the, the object you've updated, hit export, and now it's been updated. And so let's go back to prepare. And this is just kind of the workflow you're going to get, have to get used to um, when you're designing things. You're just constantly kind of flipping back and forth between different programs to make sure that the design is perfect and how you want it to be printed. And, you know, just checking through your slicer uh, G code while, you know, you can see it in real time. Um, this is just going to help you from wasting a lot of plastic. You can kind of pre-visualize what the printer is going to be doing, you know, and if it's going to be successful at uh, printing that. So let's go ahead and go back to prepare. And I may increase the size of these just to be their true size of how we built them in Blender and maybe just kind of stagger them um, around and just kind of stagger them in a printable kind of order here. And may have made them a little too big, but these sometimes turn out a little bit better when they're bigger and they just kind of look cooler. All right. And that was just for personal preference. <laughs> but now everything is exactly how we designed it in Blender. Uh, we have to update uh, this file here. So let's click on that, delete it, and let's bring in our updated one. Solidify. There we go. And let's just bring it forward a little bit. And there we go. So now we've got everything that we created. We could print this all at one. If you have experience printing, uh, you know, lots of things, then you may want to try and print them all at one time. I probably will try and do all these printing at once. But just again, you don't have to do that. Um, and I wouldn't really recommend it unless you feel like you are at that um, level to do that. Uh, but I would just do one at a time and kind of, uh, you know, maybe just pick your favorite one that you really like and get to printing. So I'm pretty happy with that. We've got a nice uh, flat bottom on all these objects coming in and that should help us win 3D printing. So good job if you've made it this far. Uh, the only one that I'm not seeing a good base for is the wireframe. So, you know, maybe we go into the wireframe. So while I'm scrubbing through, um, you know, again, I always check the first layers. Um, all these are looking pretty good. The wireframe in the Voronoi could use a little bit of help. So let's jump back into uh, Blender real quick. And this just shows you how flexible and how quickly you can update things. So here we have the the base. That's kind of, kind of strange. It's not like super flat. So let's click on the Suzanne and just change the bool tool cube. Maybe bring the bool tool cube down at the bottom and see what that does. And it may take a second to calculate. And that one just chopped off the bottom. And this one may be a little tricky. You may have to print that with a raft because these little pieces are so small. But that looks pretty awesome to me. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to export it out like that. That way we have a nice flat bottom there. So again, just click on it. Make sure it's selected. Hit export. Boom. You're done. It'll give you confirmation at the bottom. And then let's do the same thing for this one. We may have to change up our our style here. So let's just click on that, hit period. And really, I just wanted to show, I know this can be a lot to take in, but I just wanted you kind of to hear and feel and see what a 3D print designer kind of thinks like sometimes when we're making changes. So I've got the wireframe selected and we can bring the bool tool cube down here 
and just see. Okay, so that's just cutting off everything. Um, that, again, may be a little tricky. Um, I would recommend maybe doing a raft if you're going to print these little tiny, tiny guys out. You know, if you wanted it to be like four. And it looks like we went a little too far, maybe five. And so we can move that around. And let's just grab our, maybe for this one, let's just grab our box and just move it up and down until we get a nice little flat bottom there. You can even, you know, try and rearrange the modifiers there to get different results. Uh, that is going to definitely uh, be a little bit trickier uh, to print because everything is so tiny and small. But, uh, you know, you can do that as well if you want. And so I'm going to leave mine like this. And so for the wireframe, that one's going to be a little bit trickier just because of the way that the operations work. Uh, but you can still get a print from this. Uh, just may have a little trickier time getting the bottom printed. So I would recommend maybe using a raft for something like that. But again, we can still just go ahead and export it. And we can update this one and export it. And then come into our slicer, you know, update these two. And that is our wireframe and Voronoi. And so those came in over here. I can just drag those over. Make sure nothing's colliding with each other. That looks pretty good. So now let's slice it on up. So these are looking pretty good. It does say it's going to take a day uh, and a, a, almost a half to, to print out these. So I probably wouldn't do all these at once. Maybe we will. Who knows? But uh, very, very good job if you've got this far. This is very complicated stuff that you're learning and you're doing great. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the top right in the discussions. Um, if you are already familiar with 3D printing, go ahead and 3D print these bad boys and share a photo in the Discord. We would love, love, love to see what you guys create and how you remixed your Suzanne Monkey. Um, if you are not familiar with uh, 3D printing, we have another section that goes over just a basic FDM workflow. Um, or if you want to learn about other slicers, uh, the next video we're going to talk about Prusa Slicer, and that will uh, kind of show you another slicer if you're not fond of Cura. All right, let's go ahead and dive on in it.